Now I will show the, the tour. And uh, when we publish the tour, it sh should be looked like this. So it's a folder, and it has three tours. Um, each one is a tour. Uh, it's a folder, and it has for like a market tour. It has this ArcGIS Python tour box. And if you're familiar with ArcGIS, you can open it up in ArcGIS. And like you connect, you create a new connection to the folder here. And uh, right now it's already there. And in um, this connection, you can click the tour and click sometimes. And if for the market tour, it has two steps. So the first step is to get that it's like an initial process to have some statistics results. And um, for the market tour, we have provide some um, data that you can use, so like PLSS, we use the ACS and load data. So if we open it up, and it has some, this is, uh, we just copy the um, column name from the ACS data, so we will provide a data dictionary to explain each column what it means. And if you want to change the data, like use your own data sets, that is okay, but uh, because we use the ArcGIS platform, so you need to make sure that the column name is, that is exactly the same as we use, so that otherwise there would be a narrow that you, the model cannot run functionally. And uh, yeah, so to use this tour, it just loads the uh, so the ACS and load data will be the ACS CSV pass, and then you will use a ship file to represent. So this one is a polygon file that each polygon represents a block group in California. So you can use like um, county or even bigger um, polygons, but um, yeah, you need to make sure that it has these attributes that we will use in later processing. And also one more thing is that you need to create a geo database that will be the workplace for data, a later analysis. So like here, uh, we can create some uh, results. So that will be uh, the work workplace. And if you click OK, it will run. But right now, just uh, cancel it because it takes some time. And then after that, you let's assume that this one is the one that I, I just created, the workplace. Then it will automatically load some uh, results from the pre-processing steps, like the ACS browse, the subset, and the summary. Basically, there are just statistics results of the ACS um, data, like how many, what's the income in each, co uh, in each category, and the vehicle number in each, um, this should be poly, uh, block group. And what you need to do is that you name your scenario like forecast, and you say our forecast for 2020. And a skill set will not project the number of new car buyers and the, the number of PV buyers. So you need to tell us how many people you, you think will be the new car buyers. And because we use the um, California data, so it's a household base. So right now in California, there is about 20, 12 million households. And if you want to say that, I expect that 30% of them will buy new, uh, will buy new cars, and 15% of them of the new car buyers will buy PVs. Then it will give us like half million new car, uh, half million PV households in the whole California. And there are some more parameters that you can set. Like the first step is to to determine who will buy new cars. And here we just use income as the factors that will influence it, the spatial distribution of new car buyers. And after that, we use the income, the number of vehicles in each household, and the dwelling type to determine the spatial distribution of PV buyers. And 
um, you can determine the relative importance of each factor, and for each factor, there is odds ratio. So the odds ratio, basically the odds ratio means that if it's one, it's the pro um, probability that um, this category to buy, uh, like PV, will be the same as the base, uh, um, base case. If it's lower than one, means that you are less likely to buy, and if higher than one, means you yeah, are more likely to buy. And for each factor, you would determine um, the odds ratio for each factor. And then the same idea for to squeeze the PV bias into long-range PV bias and short-range short PV bias. And then click OK, the model will run. And the results will be looks like this. So if we open up the attribute table, you can see that the result is in each block group. The GUID represents each block group. How many people will buy new car and how many of them will buy PV or long long range P uh, long range PV, which is um, like PHEV and um, long range BEV like Tesla, or will buy short BUV. And you can do some visualization to create some maps. Uh, like here I've used the let's say I'm interested in the distribution of PV buyers and And here we can see that the red area means there are more people who are likely to buy a PV, and the blue area means there's less people likely to buy a PV. So that's the idea of market tour. And you can play with it and set different scenarios, different parameters, and we've got different results. Any questions? The conference has been unmuted. Um, is there any questions online? Okay, I've got one. Uh, the platform is really cool. It's built with assumptions and data for the entire state of California. Do you have already set up modules that can be used for region-specific modeling? For example, areas like just LA County or, or just Southern California? Well, for a market tour, we so we cannot do that because uh, one reason is that this model runs pretty quick, like five minutes, and it can run the whole California uh, scenarios. But for uh, workplace charging and fast charging, we do allow you to run regional uh, models like Sacramento or Los Angeles. And yeah, and we'll show you later how to do the regional model for workplace charging and fast charging. Cool. Any other questions? So the so the market tool is primarily aimed at, at modeling buyer seller behaviors, making the market in in entities that would be spe specifically state or country. You would then, for example, use the workplace tool to model for a specific business or a smaller ge geographic reason? I'm, I'm trying to understand where you use which tool. Well, for market tool, it's also, it, it just represents, uh, it just forecasts the spatial distribution of um, PV buyers or long-range PV buyers. So it can, like here I use the, um, the polygon that I use is a block group based. So the result is block group based, but if you use region based, then the result is region based. So it just depends on what kind of data you put into the model. But I mean, so with these results, you can find out if you know how many PEVs are in a certain zone. Then with the market tool, you'll know how many people commute to different places from that zone, and so you can connect that zone to uh, places by distance and by magnitude. Yeah, and we, uh, what another reason that I was just think about that, another reason that we didn't run the market tool for one particular region is that if you run the workplace charting or the fast charting model, there will be some influence from outer regions. So we recommend that you run a whole state model so that you can 
considering some, like some people that work in uh, San Francisco, they might live in Mexico no. or some other place. So if you just run the market tour for San Francisco, you cannot um, consider the outer region influence for that workplace or fast trading. So yeah, so. But yeah, it depends on your need. But if you want to just analyze the home location of a specific region, you can. But if you would like to do something later that needs this inter-regional uh, impact, you would like to do the entire uh, state together. We, are, we, are, we, you can just cut a subset of the of the data set and right. run yeah. only on a subset of the data set. There is nothing that. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it depends on the data. So if just in, if input is just um, SCAD region, then there will be just SCAD region results. Yeah, it's not that you cannot do just SCAD. And the level is a block group, which means that if you run a, a very few electric cars in your model, you will get a lot of noise, uh, the, the very stochastic model. So if you just try to assign a 1,000 cars for the entire uh, state, you will get no, only noise. If you <laughs> if you assign a half a million, you will get a, a much more representative uh, a, a tool. So it's uh, we we are not limit, We are not pro, uh, 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 stopping you from assigning any number you like. But uh, if you assign a very small number, you will get a lot of noise in the model. And if you did want to look at a thousand, uh, you could assign a million and then divide by a thousand later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that, that's, that's one way to do it for more. Probability, but I mean, this is this is a discrete choice. So um, you assign discrete cars. Any more questions? The conference has been muted. <laughs>